Hello, today we're going to talk about the VDR form and making clinical adjustments. We're first going to look at the VDR waveform and the controls that control the VDR waveform, and then we're going to actually make some adjustments on a clinical case study. So let's talk about the anatomy of the VDR waveform and the controls related to that waveform. The terminology of the VDR is a little bit different from a conventional ventilator, so let's go over that. After we get done with that, then we'll start with our case studies. So the first thing is every ventilator has an off-on control. My first clinical adjustment is pulse style flow rate. I can think of this as analogous to a PIP. It is not PIP, but it's analogous to a PIP so that I can think of adjustment. Pulse style flow rate describes the inspiratory flow coming through the ventilator during the inspiratory cycle. And in fact, I set an inspiratory time to deliver this pulse style flow rate. And so then we have expiratory time, and that simply controls oscillatory CPAP or PEEP. And I'm just going to set a certain amount of time to deliver the expiratory flow. My next control is called demand CPAP or PEEP. It delivers continuous flow through both the inspiratory and the expiratory cycle for patients that are over-breathing the ventilator that you might be able to make more comfortable by giving them a little bit more flow. I measure it in the expiratory flow or PEEP section. I've got a fail-safe sensitivity alarm. This is an alarm set for if the lines become pinched. I've got an IA ratio that's called pulse IA ratio. There's two IA ratios in the ventilator. There's a high frequency IA ratio, and then we'll also see there's an IA ratio, the conventional change between the inspiratory and the expiratory flow. The pulse IA ratio is set at a one-to-one -one IA ratio per the manufacturer's recommendations. We'll actually monitor that on the monotron. There is a third flow that can be delivered with the ventilator. So there is a inspiratory flow called pulse style flow rate. There's expiratory flow called oscillatory CPAP. And then there's convective pressure rise. Convective pressure rise accelerates that flow the most of the three flow patterns and can only be delivered after the first second of inspiratory time. In general, I use this less than 10% of the time in my patients. I can kind of think of it as a recruiting flow. I turn my nebulizer on. I have a pulse frequency control. So I can control the amount of high frequency pulses throughout both cycles of ventilation. We typically use between four to 700 high frequency pulses with the ventilator. I have a reset for in case a line gets pinched and the alarm goes off, and every ventilator has a manual inspiratory button. So let's simplify things a little bit with the VDR4. I turn the ventilator on, I set my alarms, I turn the nebulizer on, I set my pulse IA ratio at a one-to-one -one IA ratio, and in 95% of my patients or more, I'm not gonna make an adjustment to that. I don't have my demand CPAP turned on to start with in general, and I don't turn on my convective pressure rise in general to start with. So now I'm down to really five controls, which are my main controls to adjust the ventilator. There's expiratory time, inspiratory time, the high frequency rate, which I individually set. Those are the timers of the ventilator. And then I adjust my two flows. First is pulse style flow rate which is analogous to a PIP, that's that inspiratory flow. And then the expiratory flow is called oscillatory CPAP or PEEP, and I set that with the expiratory time. Let's really drill down to the waveform and look at the principal adjustments. What do I do about 70% of the time when I manipulate the ventilator? Well, truly, I adjust the two flows, either the inspiratory flow, which is called pulse style flow rate, or I adjust the expiratory flow, which is called oscillatory CPAP or PEEP. Then I can also independently adjust the pulse frequency to either affect oxygenation or CO2 removal. Let's go look at a patient and set it up on the ventilator. Okay, it looks like we have a 27-year-old male with pneumococcal pneumonia. Let's look and see what the initial settings we're gonna use. Looks like we're gonna do a pulse style flow of 26 over an oscillatory CPAP of eight. We're going to do an I time of two seconds, an E time of two seconds, a convective rate of 15, 
a high frequency rate of 500, and we'll probably start at about 60% FiO2. Let's go over to the ventilator and actually turn it on and see if we can set these settings up. So I simply turn on flow here. I'm going to turn flow onto the nebulizer. I need to come to the back and turn on the monotron, which is actually an oscilloscope, but this is where I'll get my exact timing readings and my high frequency readings. We're going to get the readings for the patient up here on what's called the digital multimeter. So there's a couple spots that we get readings from. This is very good for exact timing of the high frequency breaths and the I time and the E time of the actual convective change between inspiratory and expiratory flow. And then the actual flow readings we're going to get up here on the multimeter. All right, so let's come over to the ventilator. I can see that I've got a reading. This is the monotron readings. So I've got an I ratio times two, what the rate is, I time, E time, and 600. So let's review what we are going to do. We're going to do a pulse out flow rate of 26. So I would come up here and see what this is reading. So I see right now that my AIP, which is pulsatile flow, is at 21. So I want to increase that to 26 to start these settings. So I come down to the pulse tile flow knob, and I'm simply going to increase it. I'm going to wait a breath or two and see what the reading is. I now see that this is 25, so I'm very close. I'm just going to adjust this up to 26. My next reading is my oscillatory CPAP with the multimeter that is the bottom number or the peak. So the top number is AIP pulse style flow analogous to a PIP. The bottom number is AEP oscillatory CPAP or analogous to a PEEP. The middle number is the mean airway pressure. The number that's farthest to the right is the actual high frequency rate that the ventilator is delivering. Okay? So again, let's start over again. That pulse style flow is supposed to be at 26. It's drifted a teeny bit, so let's increase it. I know that I'm supposed to be on an oscillatory CPAP of eight. It looks like we're there. I remember that the inspiratory time length of the pulse out flow was two seconds. So I come up here and I see that the inspiratory time is reading about 1.8. I simply am going to adjust the inspiratory time and increase it. I'm just going to make an adjustment here. I'm going to wait three or four breaths to see what happens up here. We say that it's okay to be two seconds plus or minus a tenth of a second. So we'll see if that settles. So that looks pretty good for an inspiratory time. I may have to make one adjustment. I remember that the expiratory time was also two seconds. So I come up here and I see that it's reading two seconds so that I'm pretty fine. I remember that my first high frequency rate was 500 breaths. So it looks like I'm reading 600 breaths right here. So I'm going to come down here and independently adjust the pulses. I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to wait for the pulses to come down. I can hear with my ear that I'm getting closer to that little bit slower high frequency rate. The standard high frequency rate that I use with adults is 500 pulses. I see that I'm close to 520. I'm probably going to make one more adjustment down, and I'll probably be at 500. Let's look at the screen and see where we're at. So it looks like we're at 505. I review my settings. I know that I wanted to be at a pulse cell flow of 26, an oscillatory CPAP of 8. I come up to here, and I see that my settings are good. I remember that my I time is 2 seconds, my E time is 2 seconds. I come up to here and I see that my inspiratory time is a little bit too long, so I'm going to adjust that back. I need to wait two or three cycles before I check that again. When I'm setting up the VDR on a patient, it's a little bit of a patient game. Um, I make an adjustment and I wait two or three breaths to see where it's at. I now see that I'm pretty close on my I time, but that I've adjusted my E time a little bit. So wait to see where these are. I can see that my high frequency rate is set at 500 breaths. 
Let's place the ventilator on our patient and look at, see what kind of results we get with our first blood gas. So our patient's intubated, been placed on the initial settings. He's comfortable with an ET2 placement verified by x-ray. Here's his first gas, 726, 71, 147. Right, carbon 26, base S 1.4. His CO2 is too high, so what would I adjust? I'm gonna simply adjust pulse style flow by two. I'd come over to here. I know that I was at 26, so I'm gonna adjust that to 28. I now see that my pulse style flow is 28. That would be making an adjustment. So I've made my first clinical adjustment, right? It's settled. I now would wait for an hour or so and maybe get another blood gas, depending on how bad the blood gas is. Let's see how our patient's doing in this scenario. It's now several hours later, the patient's comfortable, and we're gonna do another blood gas. Uh, got a pH of 736, a CO2 of 46, a PO2 of 68. So now I've got really good CO2 clearance, but my PO2 is not so good. So what am I going to adjust? Because I'm on 80% FiO2, so I don't really want to manipulate my FiO2 anymore. So what am I going to change? An increase the oscillatory CPAP by two. So I simply come over to the oscillatory CPAP. I knew that I was on eight, and I'm going to go to 10 now. I make an adjustment. I wait a couple breaths. You can see it's went to nine, 10, there we go. So now I've made an adjustment, a primary adjustment to affect CO2, and I've made a secondary adjustment now to affect oxygenation. I simply increase these flows in two centimeter increments to affect either oxygenation or CO2. Let's see how my patient's doing a little bit later. So patient's done well throughout the night, but he's on a high FiO2 and we get this morning blood gas. 737, 44, and 61. So again, my PO2 is a little bit low. Um, I cannot really, because of cardiac effects, we'll say I cannot really increase the mean airway pressure anymore. So what could I do to affect oxygenation? I can make a simple high frequency adjustment. I know that when I increase the high frequency rate on this device, I will affect oxygenation and diffusion rate. I will make the gas more diffusive in nature. So I'm gonna go from 500 up to 700. I adjust the high frequency rate, I can hear it. I wait one or two breaths. I see that I'm getting close. I remember again that I'm trying to get to 700 and I can be 700 plus or minus 10. And it looks like I'm in the ballpark. So now it'd be the same thing as I've been doing out throughout this case. I kind of wait for a while to see what the patient's doing after I make an adjustments. These are the three most common adjustments that I might make on the ventilator with a patient. The purpose of today's video is to show the most simplest adjustments and explain the waveform. There are more adjustments to be made, but that will be done in a different talk. Thank you so much today for listening to this clinical adjustment video on the VDR4. And please remember, let that awesome accelerated laminar flow wash across your inner alveoli and clear the debris of your life. Thanks.